साथ ऑस्ट्रेलिया से डॉक्टर डेविड सिलेंस हैं जो ऐसे मरीजों का इलाज के बारे में शौक करते हैं और वो हमें इस बीमारी के बारे में अवगत कराएंगे the classic disorders were just due to mutations in type 1 collagen genes and the geometry of the crystals is abnormal and that leads to stress fractures which then go on to be full fractures. Yeah, that's true. So uh, what are the treatment options available at this moment for the children with the stress Well, Well, used with caution, the main therapy uh, which has revolutionised the care is to treat their osteoporosis. Uh, but it's only useful if they have osteoporosis. And some children with OI don't have osteoporosis. At the time you meet them, if you follow them over five, ten years, they will gradually develop osteoporosis. And therefore the bisphosphonates have been a revolution in care for children with osteogenesis and effect. So even after uh, proving that gene Genetic diagnosis, you can start this uh, this phosphonates even prior to diagnosing osteoporosis. Oh, you, well, yes, uh, no, it's to prevent it, the fractures. Yes, you, you you must establish that you have osteoporosis, and the way we yeah. the way we do that um, is to use bone densitometry. Uh, we have two other modalities. Of course, I became very expert in interpreting X-rays, and I, I still can tell you much about a child's bone density and tendency to fracture just by looking at a lateral x-ray of the spine and looking at x-rays of their femurs. Um, but, but one treats osteoporosis and there are, there are definitely patients who, who do not have osteoporosis, yet have the same mutation as a child in their family or whatever. <clears throat> and if you look at my original paper uh, from my doctorate, about 10% people with OI in families with dominantly inherited OI had never had a fracture in their lifetime. Okay. But that was many parents, not many, but that included parents. Okay, so uh, can we hide off the children or for children to get time to work? Well, the use of um, bisphosphonate, even a, a drug which is, um, uh, which is second generation, that is called such as pametronate, promotes growth and the children grow at normal height if you start them early um, and we've had a lot of children now commenced from two years upwards roughly who are growing at completely normal height, they're quite tall um, and it's quite striking what, what's happened with using the, the veteran age. Yeah, that's cool. So is there any other treatment options which are available that can uh, add to the well, I think the answer at the moment is no. There are a number of potent anti antiparotic drugs, potent drugs, and I mentioned in these talk here the dangers uh, of even thinking about using a monoclonal antibody uh, such as benoximab. Yes. And, and why, I, why I want you to be clear of the dangers is because at the international consensus meeting, everybody including people who obviously had been offered denosumab for a clinical trial, concluded that not now. It, it, is, it, is a, it is a drug which totally wipes out osteoclasts, so you can't repair stress fractures. Um, there, there was a rider and that maybe there will be treatment regimens in the years to come where they can use a long, low dose. And the other experimental treatment that's being used in animal models is anti-sclerostin or iscarostin, uh, you know, antibodies. Um, so, uh, I'd like that's if you know how long it takes to go from animal studies to a phase one, two in humans to 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 a randomised control study. We're talking about ten years. So, the present generation of children and young adults in your clinic will never, never receive any one of these new, new drugs. So, uh, is there any role of growth hormone therapy in such Well, we did a growth hormone study. If you use um, growth hormone, which is, un, uh, let's say, it's unbalanced by not being used for bisphosphonate at the same time, you actually uh, increase bone turnover. Bone density either uh, falls or at best stays the same. 
uh, and you may even have quite a rapid increase in fractures or you may uncover a tendency to scoliosis and we've seen children go from a curve of 15, 20 degrees to 80 degrees in six months. So it, it, it is a quite, uh, it's a drug where you need consent from the parents to use it. There are trials, and Jane Marini has a limited number of patients who've received both uh, the common growth hormone and a bisphosphonate. Uh, I am for a regimen of low dose uh, fairly frequently, which gives even cover. I mean, it might be possible to de design a trial where you used uh, alendronate or, or resedronate, the oral drug, while you use growth hormone. Um, to just dampen down, you know, the bone turnover and that might. But I would do it in a trial setting and I would get consent if you were going to do it because it's not been done before. That's good. So uh, is there any preventive diagnosis available uh, for the future pregnancy? Well, well, I think the answer is molecular prenatal diagnosis. That means knowing the gene mutation. Um, I think the problem we're all facing is that, if that apart from the two col one genes, there's 13 other gene loci. We do really need to know what is the genetic disorder that we're dealing with. And most of them are indistinguishable, except to people who are very, very, you know, had a lot of experience with, say, prolol 3 hydroxylase there's three genes, uh, some of the chaperones, uh, certainly uh, with uh, OI type 5, OI ITM5. Now, originally all the cases had that one mutation where uh, there is a, um, where the mutation results in the generation of a cryptic uh, start code on which inserts a leader, you know, it's, uh, I think, uh, of uh, 15 nucleotides, 5 amino acids at the beginning of the protein. But there are now some reports of other mutations in that gene, but leading to bone dysplasia, so it, it, we, we're really at the beginning. And then the several new genes, which obviously 